Today I'm on a suburban reservoir with my buddy John Levitt with Live Like John. Live Like John. Yeah. All right. And um, this is this is some of your home water. Tell me a little bit about um, what you what you think some of our our pre-spawn patterns are going to be out here on the on the lake. Sure. Um, today we're going to be looking for water where we have about 20 to 15 feet uh, that transitions into shallow. Uh, we're going to have about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind coming out of the northwest so we're going to look for protected areas. Gust up to 24 is what I read. Gust, okay. <laughs> well then definitely looking for uh, protected areas now. The protected areas do do two things. They're actually going to allow us to um, to fish without being blown off the spot and it's also the kind of places uh, that we'll show you in a little bit here on the map um, that a lot of these fish like to set up. If you, if you look at a, a, a map of a lake, and he has a nice bathymetric map that he's obtained on this particular reservoir, um, you, you go to those northwest corners uh, of the lake, I mean, this is just traditional pre-spawn, you know, reservoir largemouth stuff. Uh, northwest corners are, are basically anywhere you have a, a higher bank that's, that protects a, a shallow spawning area from a strong northwest wind and our wind today is west-northwest. Yeah. So it's gonna protect us and it's also gonna be ideal spawning habitat for these fish. Uh, I don't think that they're, they're anywhere near spawn. I mean, we've had a hard winter and, and these fish are, yeah. are delayed. So. I, I know they're on the move. I mean, I, I, the past two days I was out here and I was starting to mark fish in places that I hadn't in the past few weeks. So they're definitely on the move. I'm seeing some water temperature changes and water breaks. So, you know, this is the kind of day where we get that eight pound, 10 pound, yeah. you yeah. know, or this is the kind of day where we bust, but we won't know until we're out here getting our lines wet. Cool. Here are the maps we were talking about. This is where we're at right now and this is the area that we're gonna fish. The wind is gonna be coming out of this area. So this, so that, yeah. That, maybe that high mm -hmm. bank there, yep. you, have, you have the northwest or west-northwest yeah. wind. Yeah. That's a pretty shallow area right in there. You can see we've got some 20, uh, this is about 20, 25 foot. So I mean, these, these fish, these are where they winter up and they're gonna start moving up into this area. I like this, this bottleneck area. I think they, they, they push up to this pretty quickly. And then maybe you know, when the time's right, they jump up into these these types of areas. I also yeah. see a creek channel. Yep, comes close to a point there. Yep. That interests me for sure. Yeah, no, there's a substantial creek that 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 comes in that area. So, and whenever you're on a new body of water, it's important to to do a forage assessment. What you can um, can do online. Usually, a lot of the the fisheries services will do an assay of of what different species are out there. And I did a little bit of that for, for this reservoir. We do have some threadfin shad in this reservoir. And for that, I went with a, a more white or silvery bait like that. This is a, a assassinator clacker spinner bait. I've done real well with that in the past. Um, digging into my striper box, I grabbed that, that swim bait. So we'll give that a shot. Maybe just jigging it off the bottom, like uh, you know, in those, those deeper spots near where they spawn. Um, for sure, any any reservoir like that has some bluegill, and that's sort of a, a bluegill kind of pattern jerk bait. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have have crayfish. I'm certain these bass everywhere eat crayfish, so I got a pack of craw there, a black pack of craw. Went with black because we've had some rain here recently, and there's a little bit of little bit of muddiness, a little bit of turbidity in the water. So yeah, you definitely want to do some forage assessment uh, before you hit a new lake. Figure out what these bass are eating. You can do the same thing just as you're paddling around, looking in the water, seeing what evidence of, of, uh, of bait fish are, are out there. You know, uh, Another thing that you can do is to, to bring a pinfish rod. I got this one set up for, for crappy or bluegill fishing. Uh, it's actually the same one I use for, used for yellow perch. Um, about three weeks back on the Maryland's eastern shore, uh, you can, you know, just do some panfish fishing to figure out what's in there as well.
All right, got the first one of the day, and you can kind of tell why this fish was here. It was warmer water here. You can tell that because all of this scum is gathered here. We're, we got a real windy day. That bank over there has the wind on it. This one does not. And what that means is you get this top layer of, of water that warms up. It stays here. It doesn't get scraped off by the wind. So that northwest wind that's, that, you know, is just going to scrape off all that, all of the warm water at the surface, right here, it's not hitting it, so it's warming up. Again, you can tell from all the scum that's on the water, we got pollen down here, a uh, bunch of leaves. This area is wind protected, and wind protected means that the bass are going to be warmer. They're going to go to those warm spots first to do their, their spawning. See you, fishy. Go make more. So when I'm not out here pounding water and kayak fishing, my full-time job is I'm a landscaper. And one of the benefits of that is to see and, and understand how plants grow. And it's all about uh, soil temperature and you know how warm it is. And same goes for lily pads. Uh, we came around this point and I'm noticing these lily pads are starting to pop up. And to me, that tells me it's warmer water. That's the signal for them to start growing. You know, spring is here. Got another one, same kind of spot. He's a nice one. Really going after that shad pattern. Look at the big mouth on this thing. That one. They're up, they're up shallow. It's probably the first they've been up shallow. The buds are just, you know, starting to fall off the trees. We got pollen coming down and big bass coming shallow. Yeah. Time to let this big pre-spawn female go. Look at the egg she's got in there. She's gonna make some more bass for us, but not until I give the lure that was working to my buddy John. That is a, a assassinator clacker spinner bait with a, a swim bait on it. So that's what she liked right there. We'll go ahead and put her back where she belongs. Finally catching up to Jeff. Got a six pound, one ounce bass. She's fat. She came in about a foot of water and that's what uh, we've been looking for today. We've been trying to find that warm water, the wind protected sides of the cove. And uh, that's exactly where we found them. I uh, got her on a uh, big white spinner bait matching some of these uh, thread fin shad in here. So this is a big female and it's always important to really handle these things with care. Um, you know, when they get to this size, these are the genes that you want. In whatever body of water so you know always kind of support their belly don't don't keep them past 10 degrees you know when you're holding them blipping them and you know keeping the water as long as you can so i think it's time to put her back so she can go make more babies This is probably the first these fish have come shallow this year. So they're, they're pretty cold and that's kind of been evident from the first two fish that I've caught that were a little bit lethargic for, for what they should have been doing. And that's why you really do want to slow roll a spinner mate. Your retrieval speed is, is just creeping along. Now even with it creeping along, I'm going to show you these, these big blades. These are two big willow leaf. They're going to have a lot of lift with a bait like this. That's why I use the heavier, the heavier heads. This is a three-quarter ounce head. That'll keep it down the water column. Even with that, that being said, one thing that I'll do is I come out, come out from the bank, is I will retrieve it some, and then when I think it comes out over open water, I'll stall it and let it get down to the bottom again. There may be a stump or a log out away from shore, and then I'll, I'll keep it going and let it get back down to the bottom. So it's a series of 
of slow retrieves and descents back down to the bottom where we have that woody structure. a little further down lake from where we first were and uh, tight to wood shallow again it's the same northwest wind protective bank it's, it's a, a bank that's parallel from the first one that we were on all right big girls come shallow first we'll send her that back down there see you later all right, I think we're wrapping it up for the day. John, thanks for having me out here, bud. Very welcome, man. I think you and I did a good job. We pounded some shore. Uh, we had a northwest wind, a very stiff northwest wind, and we had to find areas that were uh, you know, protected from it. Thankfully, those are the areas the bass were in because we had a killer day. We had uh, a few you know, in the three to four pound range. We had one that was six. Um, you know, I, I was really, I learned a lot from you, man. And I really appreciate it. Right on. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. All right, we're at the takeout and uh, I had to get one more. <laughs> right, at, at, uh, right at the takeout. Skipped it under the spinnerbait up under the dock. It's been a good day for spinnerbaits. Yeah. All right, that was a pretty good day on the water. To understand this pattern, you have to understand that the the biggest fish are the ones that spawn first, and that's that's why we found them in the places we did. Um, they do the best job reproducing. They produce the most eggs, uh, and and their offspring has the longest first uh, growing season, has the best chance of of making it into the next year. So, with that knowledge, let's look at a uh, a sort of map that I did of, of the lake that we were on and really you're looking for those those um, banks with the you know the steeper banks that are going to be protected from a northwest wind um, these are actually the spots that we we caught them in John's uh, six pound one ounce was there I got a couple other in the in the upper fours along this bank uh, caught a nicer one down here uh, caught that last one off the dock here what these spots all have in common is that protection from from the wind uh, and, and we did have a strong northwest wind okay so those are the these are the banks that are going to warm up first now if you didn't have wind and, and really what this is right here is a is a cross section of of this this part of the reservoir right there if you just cut the lake in half and looked at it there uh, this is what you have here and it's you know without any wind and, and understand here I drew I drew the little uh, buds on the trees there are no leaves this is a very early spring pattern on a reservoir so you have this without any wind you have the the sun warmed top layer okay mind you no wind a little bit cooler below it's still cold down uh, down you know beneath that and what you have when when the wind really kicks in is this whole continuum gets stirred up. You know, you have some agitation across the surface and it and it pushes this this along and you get a bunch of water that's piling up there and the deeper colder water comes to the surface and it just cools off all this sun warmed layer. So anything that that has that that wind coming in and eventually working on it is is you know the cooler water from the bottom is going to come up and that water is going to stay cold whereas if you have protection from this bank up here these are the spots we were getting them okay these are the areas where you had a skim of of uh of pollen on the water you had some leaves you had some soda bottles all kinds of stuff collected here because there was there was no wind scooting it off there's a bunch of junks you know pushed up against this bank but any of the debris along in here where we were catching fish just kind of stayed there so sun warmed top layer uh, with with that the steeper bank with the protection from the northwest wind and um, you know 
that kind of illustrates why you know why they were where they were so when the the buds are, are you know full on our trees early spring get to those those uh, protected northwest uh, banks and uh, pound them shallow <laughs>